This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Chinese automakers are gobbling up EV market share in Europe. Even though they're just getting started there, they already are making a big dent in sales. Bloomberg reports that 11% of the EVs sold in Europe this year were from Chinese automakers. That's up from just 2% in 2020. And overall, Chinese exports are surging around the globe. Through September, 2.2 million passenger cars, trucks, and buses have been exported out of China, up 54% compared to a year ago, and double the average from 2012 to 2020. And EVs were a big part of that, totaling more than 655,000 units. But not all of those are from Chinese OEMs. Foreign automakers like Tesla, BMW, and Renault also export EVs out of China. NHTSA is opening an investigation into the autonomous vehicles that GM Cruise operates in San Francisco. It says some of the AVs slammed on the brakes when another car was approaching quickly from the rear, which caused a rear-end collision in at least three cases. In several other cases, the AVs became immobilized and just stopped in the road. GM Cruise says it updated the software in its vehicles three months ago, but it's unclear if that solved the problems that NHTSA is investigating. If not, it could lead to a recall, which could disrupt Cruise's plans to expand to many markets next year with thousands of autonomous vehicles. Ford keeps raising the price of the F-150 Lightning The base pro model for commercial buyers, which debuted at $40,000, now starts around $56,000. And the standard range XLT now starts at over $63,000. Other models are not affected by the increase. Ford started raising prices in chunks at a time. In August, it raised prices for all models anywhere between $5,000 to $8,000. And in October, it raised the base price to 52 grand. Ford blames inflation and rising commodity costs, but we think it's also raising prices because it knows it can get away with it. At a media event earlier this week, Ford says it hasn't seen a drop in demand for the Lightning, despite the higher prices. We want to know what drives your testing, OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing. Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Whoever thought we'd see a day when a Cadillac is powered by a one and a half liter turbo? It's happening in China, where a new version of the Cadillac CT4 that's not offered in the U.S gets a turbocharged 1.5 liter 4 versus the U.S. version, which comes standard with a 2 liter. Cars with engines less than 2 liters pay half the sales tax in China, only 5%, versus 10% for cars with bigger engines. The new engine is mounted lengthwise rather than sideways, or longitudinal instead of transverse, and it only drives the rear wheels via an 8-speed automatic transmission. The setup powers the car from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 7.9 seconds. Pricing for this version of the CT4 will start around $31,500. And speaking of GM in China, it hasn't given up on sedans there yet, and Buick is coming out with an updated version of the LaCrosse. Its front-end design is clearly inspired by Buick's EV concepts, but it also gets a new rear-end treatment, and the body accent that flowed from the rear door into the rear fenders is now gone. It's said the new LaCrosse will retain its 2-liter turbocharged engine, but there's no plans for electrification at the moment. And I don't know about you, but that front end sure reminds me of a Toyota Camry XLE. Bentley is bringing the bling. The luxury brand believes it's the first to install 3D-printed gold parts into an automobile. The limited-edition Mulliner Batour features the pieces at key driver touch points, 
including the dial around the stop start button that changes the drive modes, the vent controls on the dashboard, and even a thin insert in the steering wheel. Bentley doesn't say what the option costs, but it uses about 210 grams of 18 karat gold, which has a raw material value of roughly $9,000. But that's just a drop in the bucket of the Mulliner Batours 1.65 million pound price tag. Renault is coming out with a new crossover with a piece of tech you don't normally see in this segment. The all new Austral is a C-size crossover that rides on the group's CMF platform and replaces the Kajur in its lineup. And that piece of tech we're talking about is four wheel steering. A brand new multi-link rear axle allowed for the addition of a rear steering mechanism which can turn the rear wheels up to five degrees. And this makes parking the vehicle much easier and makes high-speed maneuvers feel more precise. At Schaeffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility. Manufacturing smarter. Reducing CO2 emissions. Making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. Several years ago, NCAP, which crash tests vehicles for safety, introduced Green NCAP, an initiative that evaluates vehicles on how environmentally friendly they are, and it just released its latest rounds of results. And one thing that caught our eye was the Ford Puma, which is a flex fuel model. Green NCAP evaluated the Puma with both standard E10 gasoline as well as E85 fuel. And when it came to greenhouse gas emissions, the Puma with E85 had a score nearly two times better than the one it evaluated with regular gasoline. And overall, the E85 Puma earned a three-star rating compared to the two and a half star rating that the Puma with standard fuel earned. Making cars lighter with aluminum or a mix of materials is great, but do body shots really have the know-how to fix them when they get damaged in an accident? Most do not. That's why ICAR, the Inter-Industry Conference on Auto Collision Repair, offers training and certification for repair shops and their techs. But it takes money to do that, and Jaguar Land Rover just became the latest company to join iCar's Sustaining Partner Program to help fund these training programs. And so here's a tip for you. If your vehicle gets in an accident, you're probably better off getting it repaired at a body shop that has a gold or platinum certification from iCar. Citroen came up with one of the coolest concept cars of all time. They call it the Asterix. The body is made from solid oak. The rollback roof is made from rugged canvas. The wheels are recycled from warrior shields. The air suspension uses bladders made from the guts of boars. The headlamps are powered by fireflies. The trunk lid is forged steel. And the overall design was inspired by the Citroen 2 Chevaux or 2CV. Note how far back the axle is mounted which archaeologists now know improved the ride of ancient chariots. And it was made for a French comedy called Asterix and Oblix, The Middle Kingdom, which comes out next year. And that's a wrap for today's show. Thanks for joining us, and I hope you have a great weekend. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.